So welcome everyone to this edition of Stories for Healing. Uh, we are moving through the months now of this tremendous project. Um, it really was an attempt first by me and then really storytellers from around the world to say, in these really troubled times, can't we tell some stories of healing and reconciliation, move away from all the antipathy and divisiveness to a, to a place where we, uh, we can actually learn to get along with each other again? Um, and to that end, uh, as I mentioned, storytellers literally from around the world are joining us uh, and telling just wonderful stories to help lift the spirit of everything. Um, and today we're very fortunate to have uh, Heather Forrest here to tell us a story. Heather, please tell us a story. Thank you. It's, it's good to be here. Sometimes I find comfort in this old literary tale, which was written by Jane Taylor. And I find comfort in it when I'm confronted with big jobs to do in my own personal life or in the world at large. Jane Taylor is an author noted for her stories and poems written for very young children. Her most famous is the star, as in twinkle, twinkle, little star. She wrote The Discontented Pendulum. It was published in London in 1855. I stumbled upon it and I enjoyed it and turned it into my own version. I call it The Grandfather Clock. Tick a tock a tick a tock a tick a tock clock tick a tock clock tick a tock tick tock tick a tock a tick a tock a tick a tock clock tick a tock clock tick a tock tick tock there once was a grandfather clock with a huge pendulum that swung back and forth keeping time for the family in a big old house ticking and a talking all day long keeping time for the family in a big old house one day that old clock started thinking i'm going to tick for 100 years now that's once each second 60 times a minute 60 minutes an hour 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, for 100 years. Now the clock was good at numbers and was curious to know how many times it would have to tick in 100 years. The clock took the time to figure it out. And it came out to be three billion one hundred fifty three million six hundred thousand times oh three billion one hundred fifty three million six hundred thousand times that's a lot of work and just the thought of that much work made the old clock so tired it quit ticking Soon, everybody in the house with that clock was late. No one knew when to go to work. No one knew when to go to sleep. Why, no one knew when to take the muffins out of the oven. Soon, people would walk past that grandfather clock standing stately at the end of the hall, and they'd mutter nasty things right to its face. You used to be reliable. Now you just don't work right anymore. What's your problem? Well, no one in the house understood the clock's problem, except a little girl who just happened to be excellent at mathematics. One day she went up to the clock and said, <clears throat> Grandfather Clock, I think I've figured out your problem. I think that you think in a hundred years you are going to have to tick 3,153,600,000 times. <laughs> You're wrong. You're going to have to tick more than that. You forgot to count leap years. So it's an even bigger job than you thought. 
However, you might consider this. It is a big job, I understand. But you don't have to do it all at once. You only have to tick once a second. You could do that big job just one tick at a time. One at a time. Ooh, one at a time. Well, now that sounded much better. To the clock. Tick a tock a tick a tock a tick a tock clock. Tick a tock clock. Tick a tock. Tick tock. Tick a tock a tick a tock a tick a tock clock. Tick a tock clock. Tick a tock. Tick tock. So that's how I've been getting through one tick at a time. Here's another story. It's an allegory. I love allegories. They're wonderful symbolic tales which have ideas as characters. And here's an old one from Ethiopia. It addresses one of the big jobs in our world today, protecting the truth. Fire, water, truth, lie. Fire, water, truth, lie. Fire, water, truth, and lie all lived together in a big house, oh, but they kept their distance from one another. Fire was always leaping out of water's way, and truth and lie, well, they sat on opposite sides of the room at all times. However, one day, they decided to go hunting together. They came upon a herd of cattle and decided to bring the, the herd back to their village. As they herded the cattle down the path, Truth said to the group, it would be most fair to divide these cattle equally. All agreed that this was true, except for lie, but lie kept quiet about it. After a while, Lie went to water and said, Water, if you destroy fire, there will be more for each of us. Well, water realized that <laughs> this was true. And so water flowed over fire until there was nothing left of it but a pile of wet soot and steam. Then, Lie went to Truth and said, Truth, look what our criminal friend Water has just done to fire. We must get away from Water. Let's go to the top of the mountain. And so Truth and Lie went up the mountain with the cattle. Water tried to follow, but as the path became steeper and steeper, Water kept tumbling back down upon itself, and it has done that ever since. Meanwhile, up at the top of the mountain, Truth and Lie guarded the cattle. And while they were grazing, Lie rose up and said, I am more powerful than you. Truth, I am your master, and you are my servant. I am not your servant, said Truth. I am powerful, too. They argued and they argued and they argued until finally the wind came. They asked the wind, Wind, which of us is more powerful, truth or lie? Wind didn't know, but wind said, I blow around the world, I shall ask and return with opinions of others. Wind traveled around the world asking everyone, what's more powerful, the truth or a lie? Wind finally returned and said, ah, my friends, I have heard that a single lie, a single lie can destroy truth. Oh, but I have also heard that like a candle glowing in the dark, 
a single word of truth can illuminate a situation. Falsehood, said the wind, is indeed powerful, but it can only rule when truth stops struggling to be heard. Fire, water, truth, lie. Fire, water, truth, lie. Oh, thank you, Heather. What what wonderful stories. Oh. And, um, you know, I, I particularly enjoy the the rhythm that you created in your tick-a-duck, tick-a-duck. Uh, very, very nice there. Um, is there a particular, I know the second story is a newer story for you. Yeah. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how you came across it? Yes, it's in uh, Roger Abrams' African folktale book, uh, one of my favorites. It's uh -huh. a good collection that um, surveys a great deal of the continent. And I as I was attracted to it because it's an allegory, and I love allegories. I love <laughs> the um, the symbolic nature of, of story in general, but an allegory is most particularly a symbolic story. Sure, sure, yeah. And I love the image of the, the truth as a candle there, the, the candlelight just spreading out. Um, both powerful. Uh, certainly lots of stories about how one... Um, manages to bring truth to the world, but this is even more basic than that, just recognizing its power. So thank you. Thank you so much. Um, welcome uh, again to the end of another uh, edition of Stories for Healing. Um, as you know, we're, we're broadcasting them every day now um, and every weekday, and we invite you to share them with your friends if you want to see the archive, you can go back over to YouTube and find it there or browse through the site, uh, whichever is easier for you. It's good to hear these stories. I can tell you as storytellers, it's good to tell the stories. It's healing for us as well. Um, but even more so, let's, let's realize that we don't have to do everything all at once. Um, and spreading the truth can always be an enlightening experience. So please, uh, we look forward to seeing you in our next episode. Bye-bye.